Do you remember that sound? That horrible internet dial-up sound? Well, back in the day, when we had to use telephones to get on the internet, the sound it made when the modem dialed up was something like this. Okay, I can see a slight look of recognition there. Maybe I need to do it louder. You know, if you just pretend to know what I'm talking about, I'll stop. If you're watching this video, that means you're watching this on a website. So, you might be wondering, is the web address that you're watching this video on subject to copyright law? Are you going to get www.sued.com if you copy someone else's web address? Well, here's your answer. Nope. That was easy, right? Video over. Just kidding. There's always more to explain. Even though copyright doesn't protect web addresses, they can still be protected by trademark law. And generally speaking, companies might be more likely to go after isolated incidents of trademark infringement than they are isolated instances of copyright infringement. So, before you start copying other people's website names, you should look into a few things. Now, I'm not going to go over all the differences between trademark and copyright because we're supposed to keep these videos short. So I'll say this. If you have a business or product name that you think someone has infringed on with their domain name, you can probably take legal action against that domain owner if all three of these things are true. Number one, the person registered a web address with that includes your name in it or the person registered a confusingly similar name to your business. Number two, this special someone registered this name with the sole purpose of using your popular trademark to attract visitors. Number three, to top it all off, he or she must have had no legitimate reason to use the domain except to take advantage of your trademark name. This means if a person buys a domain with the intention of making a parody of your product or to create an online forum for criticizing your product, then they probably do have a legitimate reason for doing what they did. If all three of these things are true and you were the first person to use that name, then you almost definitely have a good case to force the other person to stop using the name. If not, you might run into some trouble. If you're confused, you should just ask us for free at newmediarights.org. That's what we're here for. Maybe I've gotten ahead of myself. We should talk about why domain names are considered trademarks. All sorts of names and designs can be trademarks. As soon as people begin to associate a phrase, logo, or name with a product or service, it can be trademarked. Think about the name McDonald's. If you saw a bag labeled McDonald's, you'd probably assume that that bag was full of hamburgers or pieces of chicken or whatever. Now, if you went to mcdonalds.com, you'd also expect to be going to a website owned and managed by the McDonald Fast Food Company. Now, imagine you started a website to sell frozen hamburgers and registered the domain as mcdonalds.com. If you had no good reason for registering that name, McDonald's could sue to take that domain from you. Also, if you register a domain that uses someone else's trademark because you want to later sell that domain to the person who owns the trademark, you might be guilty of cyber squatting. But remember, you can register a domain containing a trademark if it's for a non-commercial purpose like parody or criticism thanks to fair use. Finally, even if you are well within your rights to register a domain name with another person's trademark in it, that company might still send you a cease and desist letter even if you didn't really break the law. People like you get bullied all the time like that. That's why organizations like New Media Rights are here to stand up for you if something like that happens. Speaking of breaking the law, we're breaking the bank here providing you with these entertaining and informative videos. If you like what we're doing, why not give us a donation? You can donate on our YouTube channel or at newmediarights.org. See you later.